Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the KGC show. Great to have you back. Happy 4th of July, everybody. And, you know, thank you to everyone who has served past, present, and future. And most importantly, happy birthday, America. One of the great, the only greatest places to ever live. No matter how divided we get, my country is still one of the greatest countries to man known. And it's because of the people that have died for our freedoms to do stuff like this. Now, Happy 4th of July. Let me get off my soapbox. We got a big, great show today. Um, but before we get into our show, we can't forget about my buddy, Mr. George W. Martinez. He is um, an incredible songwriter. And you, please go check out his stuff. And he, we have an episode coming out with him real soon. Um, but this is a book about how to write songs in, uh, in the 2023. So last year's update. And I... And I hope and pray that we can get a new one out of him uh, for 2025, because a lot can change in two years. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to write songs. And so I hope George gives us uh, a new book here soon. George, I love you. Danny, Stephanetti, I love you. William Lee Golden and the Goldens, I love you. And Kate Statton, you're incredible. Anyway, quit promoting indie artists and get to our guest today. Our guest is... When I tell you that for me personally, as a podcaster, I'm all about looking at incredible ways to do stuff for you guys. But this great individual is just that. He is one of the best website designers that I possibly know. And I texted him with this. I said, hey, man, come. would you come do the show? And he said, yes. And I'm so thankful that he offered his time to be here with us today. Please make welcome my friend. The very opposite of his name, the very fun and always talented Kyle Boring. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Caden. Thank you for that awesome buildup. I got a lot to live up to now. <laughs> well, you saw my questions before, so. <laughs> anyway, man, how you doing? So far, so good. Trying not to melt in this heat. Uh, I don't know how hot it is where you are, but here in Ohio, we're fluctuating between 85 and ungodly hot we're on a routine basis so we got a little bit of a break today but it's by by thursday when we're trying to set off fireworks we're probably going to be melting again yeah so before we get too far into the show since the fourth of july is right around the corner do you have any family do you have any traditions that you do on the fourth of july uh in recent years it's been mostly travel um my family and I, we, we do a lot of traveling. We've got a travel trailer that we take with us. We just got back from a trip to Colorado. And then before that, we did some trips up to New York State. We've gone crisscross the country a few times. And usually July 4th is one where we're kind of out on the road and enjoying ourselves. We did, I think it was two years ago, we were in Mackinac Island for the 4th of July. So as long as we're on the road doing something, we're usually pretty good. That's probably the closest we'll get to a tradition is just being somewhere out traveling. Somewhere in good old US of A. That's right. That's Celebrating right. the country anywhere that we can. That's right. And we should be doing that every day, celebrating our country. And, you know, obvious reasons. But, um, man, I, I want to thank you so much for being here on the show today and, and what this means to me as a honor. Um, but, you are actually one of the best website designers that I know, and I'm not just saying that. Can you talk to a little bit about how you got started in that website designing? Oh, geez, that goes all the way back to when I was just a barely a teenager. Um, back in around 90, 95, 96 is when our family first got our home computer with America Online. And... 
that was back in the days where you had to do the dial up internet. You heard all the static. It was like trying to tune in a TV station in the middle of the night. And you had about an hour at a time because that's all you could afford because America Online billed by the hour and you were using your phone line. So if somebody was on the phone or somebody picked up the phone, they kicked you off line. So technology's come a long way since then. But one of the first things that I got into once we got on to America Online and really the internet in general was seeing people build websites. And it's something that just caught my interest right away. There were several people that were making, at the time, fan sites. This was before artists really knew that there was a market for websites. There were a lot of fan sites that existed before a lot of artist sites actually came online, official sites. And I joined that fray very early on. There were a couple people that had some Oak Ridge Boys related fan sites. I'm a huge Oak Ridge Boys fan myself. And I just jumped in. I, I went all the way in and said, I want to build a website. I'm going to teach myself how to do this, started putting it together. And that was kind of the starting point for me is that little fan site turned into people seeing it. And then somebody said, hey, can you build a website for this? Can you build me a website? And then it just kept growing and growing and growing. But I never really thought about too much being any sort of career or really day job. It was just a hobby that I had at the time growing up. Now that I've been doing this for, gosh, almost 30 years now, um, give you an idea how old I am, <laughs> um, it's just, it, it really has turned into a career. It's something that I was, ju it just came natural to me and it kept growing from there. I was able to turn that into a full-time position when I was in need of work and it's just continued from there. So it it it's an example of if you're really good at something, do your best to turn that into something you can get paid to do. Yeah. Amen. Trust me. If there's anybody that can say amen to that, it's me. Cause that's <laughs> what I'm trying. That's right. But, but you know, I gotta ask you, you know, when did you figure out it was the turning point? When did you start to think that, man, I could, <laughs> I could actually do that. I could actually do this. Sorry. So the the way that it came about is kind of interesting because up I, I, up to that point I had it had just been a hobby. And occasionally I'd make about a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there. Someone would say, "Hey, can you build me a quick website?" And I'd slap something together. Really wasn't putting a whole lot of effort into it, other than just tinkering with it. And there came a point where. I had been out of work for a little while. I had done some IT related stuff, but not really anything full time professional in web design. And my wife said to me, why don't you just start putting yourself out as a web developer? I said, because I haven't really done that full time. She said, you know how to do all that just as good as anyone else does. Put it on your resume. So I did. And about three weeks later, I got a phone call from a really large company saying we're in need of someone with your skills and off to the races. That's how it came all, all came together. Yeah. So before we get into, you talked about one of my favorite country groups of all time, and we'll, we'll get to that in just one second, but for somebody watching out there, can you tell them what it means to be doing your, what you and dreamed of doing as a child? as a teenager can you tell them what it's like to live your dream as a job it's it's funny that you put it that way because my dream growing up really wasn't in web development that it's, it's everything i've ever done in terms of websites and and web development of that i've kind of stumbled into by accident it was never something i set out to do my my lifelong dream growing up was to be a musician and, and, and singer. And I, I still do that. I've, I've done a few albums here and there. They're available online for streaming, but it's, it's never been, I've never been able to turn that into a full-time career. It's always been this second skill that I've developed over time that has turned into my career. And the best, the best advice I can give in that aspect is don't count yourself out if you're not doing what was number one on your list. I'll always have additional skills, always have something. The, the cliche is have something to fall back on. You hear it all the time. People will say, you, you're a dreamer. You got to have something to fall back on. Well, this is, this is what I fell back on, but it's still something that I'm passionate about. It's something that I'm skilled in, something that I can do fairly well. And 
it, it it's an interesting turn of events to say this is the career path I thought I was going to take. This is the career path I'm on, but they continue to intersect in ways that I never would have dreamed. So even falling back on something that I didn't anticipate, it's still leading to opportunities that I otherwise never would have had. Yeah. And, and just like one of those opportunities that you thought you might never had is, is having a partnership with the Oak Ridge boys. Like, like this isn't like, this isn't like the Georgia Clodhopper Oak Ridge boys. Like this is like the real deal. How'd that come to be about? It, it's a, it's a really funky full circle situation because when the, uh, again, as a teenager, the fan site that I put together, they were aware of that. They, they were very aware of what websites were out there. And I think my website launched around 96, 97 ish. And their official website launched shortly thereafter. So it, it, they at least knew that it was there and knew of the site. And through various other opportunities, I got to know them pretty well, partly because of the site and from just having the opportunity to see them in person and get to talk to them here and there. We did become friends over the years. And when it came time for some website changes to be done recently, I went to them and said, hey, I'm, I'm still doing this. I've been doing it since I was 13. You've seen what I can do. Can I have a shot at it? And they came back and said, show us what you got. So I put it together and that's what they went with. And I'm blessed to say that these guys who have been heroes for years are not only friends, but now also it, not necessarily employers, but, you know, being able to work with them in partnership, it, it, it is still very surreal because I am still doing something that I always had kind of a dream in the back of my head. It's not exactly what I thought would pan out, but. I can't argue. I mean, yeah. how many people get to say that they're they're working with their heroes? Do you? So I know that you saw them in concert because spoiler alert, I follow you on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> if you guys don't do that, you probably should because this guy he's interesting in everything he posts, not just on Facebook but all social media platforms. And and trust me, if you guys like what you've seen of his already and you guys want more please do me a favor and just follow this young man this incredible really talented man not just for me but just because he's an overall genius of a talent and i'm saying that because he can do something i can't do y'all see my website <laughs> but <laughs> do you have any funny stories with the guys or do you have any stories that kind of stick out into your mind yes there there's one in particular that re really sort of got everything kind of off the ground. When Again, going back to when I was about 13, 14 years old, I had been, I knew that they did a fan club party every year during fanfare. And I kept, for about two or three years, I would ask my parents, can we go down to this fan club party? Because I knew that you could meet them there. I'd never met them before. So one year they finally got it to where, yes, we're going to go down. That's going to be our vacation. We'll go to their fan club party. and. The very first thing I said when I saw Joe Bonzel is, do you remember this particular song? And he said, man, I, I don't know if I can remember the words. So I stood there flat footed, looked right in his face and sang it to him <laughs> with no hesitation. He went, you know what? That's pretty good. I, I might I might bring you up later and we'll give that a shot. Well, I didn't think anything of it. I thought, yeah, sure. You're going to call me on stage during a concert. Yeah. Halfway through the concert, he goes, where's that kid that sang that song for us? Come on up here. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> and uh, again, I'm like young teenager, never been on stage before in my life. And that was my first time performing in front of a full audience was with my heroes. To, to say that it was mind blowing is an understatement. But that's really what started the friendship with with me and Joe. And then by extension, the rest of the group over time is just having no fear walking up there like like I own the place and saying, hey, this is what I want to do. Let me show you what I can do. It struck a chord. And and it, it it's something that to this day is really a major lifestone, like milestone in my life for me because it, it was a chance to do something I always wanted to do with my heroes. And it wasn't just a one time over and done with. It led to 
an ongoing friendship that turned into a partnership that I really appreciate. Yes. And before we go any further into this show, I would like to send my deepest prayers and thoughts to Joe Bonzel in his, you know, in his having to retirement from the road and also to congratulate him in that same breath because his unreleased new book called I See Myself is you can pre-order it today. But I saw somewhere that it was already number one before it even was released. That's incredible. God is still not done with you, Joe Bonzel. I believe Amen. that. And Amen. Man, I gotta ask you, how many websites have you like have can you say that you've been a part of? Oh, um, well, that's it depends on how you look at it because my my day job, quote unquote, right now, I work with a uh, website development agency out of Virginia and their clientele is upwards of 400 plus websites. So at any given point, I've got access to make updates to at least that many websites in terms of ones that I have built myself. Uh, I'd say over the years, probably about 50 or 60. Um, some have come and gone. Some have lasted for a while. Um, over time, I've, I've parlayed it in some instances where I've been on staff for a company specifically to build their websites so i don't know i've ever really put a number on it to be honest with you i'd say as far as building from scratch probably around 50 or 60 in terms of supporting it's well over 400 is there any artist i have to ask you is there any artist that you would love to do a website for uh whoever's gonna pay the best <laughs> <laughs> Hint, hint, Taylor Swift. I would love to be able to work on your website because I know that I you would get your money's worth on that. Um, I, you... I'm, I, I've never really set out to uh, target any one particular artist necessarily. If, if someone wants one done, I'm more than happy to look at it. There are quite a few uh, companies out there that are dedicated to the music business. So this is something where I, I don't necessarily have my finger on that directly, but... I'm I'm not gonna turn any offers down either. So, yeah, and, and you know, I, Kyle, I you're such an incredible talent. It, was there a website that you may not have had like a full hand in, but you've you've helped you know along the way that you can when you started, you can see your process that you how far you've come from when you started that website to where it is today. Um, actually, I'd probably say the Oak Ridge Boys website is a good example of that. Um, their website has existed in some form for the last you know, 25 plus years. I've seen that progression of the website without my involvement. So when I went into this particular project, one of the first things I said is I don't want to reinvent the wheel. What you guys have and what you have had in the past is fine. All we're doing is just going to you know, give it a little bit of a spit polish and, and bring it up to date, but we're, we're not out here to completely redo everything. And they were very supportive of it. Um, they were with me every step of the way. They offered some guidance and feedback here and there, but for the most part, it was, you know what you're doing, so we'll let you do your thing. And I really appreciate them having that level of trust in me to be able to do that. But as far as the process, you know, my approach has always been, you tell me what it is you want to accomplish with your site, and we work backwards from there. We'll figure out what tools you need, then what it's going to look like, and then we actually put it together. So before we ever build it, we've got everything mapped out, and we know what the end goal is going to be. Yeah, and and trust me, it, it shows that you really love it, and you it shows that you put your heart and, and everything that you've got into it. And and I imagine that's what it likes, or that's what it's like. It's putting your heart, and it's kind of like a child, you know? Every one of them is kind of like a child to you. Would that Very be fair? So. Uh, yeah. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't even go to... Yeah, it, it's a creation, but the difference being that as with anything creative, once you're done and it's out there for the world, it's not yours anymore. It belongs to the world. It belongs to the people that are visiting it, consuming it, you know, wh whatever it is that you're putting out. At some point, you have to let it go and it, it belongs to everybody. So 
it, it, it can be a little difficult at times because if you do something creative that somebody doesn't like, it, it's very hard not to take it personal. But at the same time, you have to just approach it from the standpoint of, I've done my part. I'm giving it to everybody else. What they do with it is up to them. Yeah. Man, I know I kind of, you kind of already answered this, but you know, the last question I have for you before we do a rapid fire Q&A, because you know, <laughs> Would you mind sticking around for that? Yeah, sure. No problem. I'm so glad you said yes, because <laughs> then it would make me start talking to myself. Do that enough already. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, but what would be the best advice? And what, what, what piece of advice did you get that kind of you look at when you feel like, man, I can't, I don't have it in me today to do a website or, or to work on this certain project was there anything that somebody told you that that made you think man i have to do it today i get to do it today um i don't know if there's ever really been a situation where that, there's been plenty of times where i've maybe have not been up to par in terms of i i don't feel like working on it right this second and the best advice I've really ever gotten in that aspect is take a break. Don't yeah. be afraid to say, I, I need some breathing room. It, it never hurts. There was one time where I was at a friend's house and we had been doing some recording and we had spent probably four or five hours working on something. We were kind of getting it right. We weren't necessarily 100% happy with it. And eventually he said, you know what, let's go get some lunch. Let's take let's take a break. We're not going to listen to this anymore. We're not going to do anything more on this. We're going to come back to it with fresh ears. And sometimes what you need to do, you you may be so deep into what you're working on that you start to miss things because you're so laser focused on, I need to get this exact thing working, or I need to get this sounding exactly the right way, or this needs to look exactly like this, that you start missing other pieces and other areas start to suffer. So taking a step back, breathing, Go do something else. Get your mind off of it. When you come back, you you you've lost that laser focus on the one problem. You get to see the bigger scope of things. Then it becomes easier to fix. And there was one particular instance I remember very vividly where I was told, "We have to have this particular feature on this website by this date." And there is no there's there's no extension. It has to be done, end all be all. And I spent two days laser focused on one aspect that I could not get working. And I finally got fed up and said, you know what? I'm going home. I'll come back tomorrow. We'll sit down. We'll take a look at it. We'll figure this out, but I am not doing any more on this right now. Came back about a day and a half later. I looked at it and went, you know what? I completely missed this click, click. <laughs> and it worked. So I, it, that's, that's one of the reasons that it, you just always have to be willing to take a break. Nothing is so important that you can't walk away from it for a minute and get a fresh perspective. That's right. And Kyle, it, what a true, what true words those are, you know, those are, those aren't, those are words that somebody might need to hear is it's, it's okay to take a break, but most importantly, it's okay to just enjoy life by relaxing a little bit you know yes there's so many things in this life that are so stressful if you live your life relaxed <laughs> look at me I, everything's just going to turn out fine or and, at the very least be able to recharge i mean yeah. there are some people they they don't have the luxury of taking a two-week vacation or really taking a day or two off it, that could be a struggle for them but finding ways to disconnect from what it is that's causing your stress or what it is that you are trying to do and maybe struggling with, just find some time to walk away from it. Just get get a fresh perspective and then come back recharged, ready to go. Yeah, that's probably the most valuable advice I ever got is come back to it with fresh eyes, fresh ears. Let's let's give it another shot. That's right. And Kyle, thank you so much again, buddy, for coming on to the show. And and I, I, I truly do appreciate you coming on and opening us, opening up to us about, you know, the, the creative process of, of building a website and, you know, some of your favorite projects that you've gotten to be done. So thank you for coming on and talking to us today. We really do appreciate it. 
Well, thank you, Caden. I, I, again, I am in great company here. I'm really honored that you would have me on here, and it, it is very much appreciated from my end as well. Trust me. Well, I hope that you come back and see us sometime. Give us an update on how you're doing. Absolutely, sure. Well, I would we I we would love that because, you know, this is a family. You're accepted into a family now, and and uh, so thank you so much for coming in and being a part of this, and and um you will have something to do with this show in some way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, Caden. But, um, man, you want to do a little rapid fire to kind of close this out? Let's hit it. Let's go. What's your favorite song on radio today? Oh, I, I don't know that I can answer that because I don't listen to a lot of modern radio. Most of what I listen to is Sirius XM and I, it's, um, I've got the eighties channel playing. I've got the classic rock playing. I've got, uh, Prime Country, Bluegrass Junction, um, Hair Nation sometimes, even though it doesn't look like it. Um, <laughs> I, I Very eclectic taste, so I, I don't know that I could probably do the one on radio today because I haven't probably haven't heard it. Yeah, well, no, never mind. Good answer. <laughs> I'm, that's a good answer. Uh, what's your favorite movie? What's your, like, top five? Oh, favorite, look over my shoulder right here, and if you look closely, you'll see Back to the Future memorabilia. That is my number one movie, and not just this past week, not this past weekend, the weekend before, I got to see Back to the Future, the musical, on Broadway in New York City. So that was a, that was really cool for me to be able to see, because that's something I've been wanting to see for a while. That is by far my top favorite movie of all time. Well, that was easy. More, it, that was <laughs> unlike your song, so. You made up for it in that good. There you go. There you go. What's your favorite TV show? Of all time, I would probably say Whose Line Is It Anyway? That's a good show. And I, and I have to go. It, it's the Drew Carey rent it, version is the one that I saw the most of. But the show in general is just hilarious. That's pretty good. Uh, what's your favorite book? Um, It's cliche if I say the Bible, but that is true. Um. Aside from that, I've I've read quite a few different books, so it's hard for me to pick one other than that. So I'll 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 stick with the Bible. The Bible and Behind the Beard are my two favorite. <laughs> I've read that Oaks, one as well. Any of the Oaks books, G.I. Joe and Lily, On the Road, you know, all those stuff from Elvis to Elvira. Can't forget about the bass singer. Uh, That's right. Th those are all some of the greatest books that I've gotten to read. Not that it cares, but I love you, boys, and. What's your favorite ice cream? Oh, I'm gonna go with classic vanilla. Oh, buddy, that, that's Me. that's one that's one area where my name comes completely into effect. <laughs> Mine too. That we're a lot more alike than I thought, buddy. Uh, <laughs> and and you know, the last thing I always have to say is, what would you tell yourself now? What what piece of advice would you give yourself as a kid that you know now that you wish you would have known back then? It's a piece of advice that I have heard from another individual. Um, and what it amounts to is you don't have to solve every problem right now. There are some yeah. problems that the world will solve for you. And, it, you know, when, when you're young and ambitious and a little wound up tight like I was at one point, it, it you feel like you have to solve every problem that's put in front of you and i that naturally that's how i am as, as a you know technical person working on websites working in it i just naturally want to solve problems and there are certain areas where you just have to say i don't need to solve this right now or this is not my problem to solve someone else will solve it something else will solve it it will solve itself and being able to realize that it's okay, again, sometimes you just have to walk away. You may come back and solve it. You may come back and realize you can't solve it. But, you know, that's that's the way that's the way the world works. It's not always for us to solve everything that's on our plate. That's right. And and man, thank you so much for coming on. And, and you know, it's okay. It's also okay be able to say no once in a while don't feel so uptight that you have to say yes to everything because absolutely when you say yes to the what you might think is the right thing could actually lead you down destruction and you know so just be careful with every opportunity and as i've heard it say by one of the smartest men i've know 
in my personal life, his name is Jeff Panzer. Anybody that knows that name loves the guy. And he always tells me, he says, don't look back. Don't look back at what made you weak in life and look forward. You got to keep pushing ahead. And I'm quoting that from Jeff Panzer. I'm kind of paraphrasing what he says. But the main point is that is don't look back. Don't look back on that negative in your life because that's the thing that holds you back and holds you down. You got to keep focus and you got to bring those moments that inspire you and, and just kind of change your life to help you in life and succeed in life. That's what Jeff Panzer has taught me. And I hope Kyle and I have kind of brought a new perspective of the music industry because oh, the website is really kind of the core thing for everybody now these days is you kind of have to have a website now these days to, you know, be official. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, that's very true. But, uh, I hope that me and Kyle kind of brought you a new perspective of that music industry. And, and I hope it was entertaining. And I know Kyle was entertaining for me. And, um, I only hope I was a little bit entertaining for him, but, uh, <laughs> Kyle, thank you so much for coming on, buddy. Now, Caden, thank you. The pleasure is all mine. And um, we'll get you back on here real soon, and, and we can't wait to chat with you again. And and um, again, honored to have you on, and and can't wait to do it again. You got it, man. Looking forward to it. Thank Look you. At, thank you, buddy. And thank you guys so much for watching the KGC show, where love always wins because well, love is better than hate. And if you don't believe me, well, that's your fault, not mine. Have a great day, everybody. Love you guys. Love one another. And we'll see you soon. Danny, Steph Natty, take us out with the KGC show. Love you guys. KGC show. The Cowboy Kaden. The KGC.